continue on with part two of our overview of the interface inside of 3D Coat. What we're going to cover in this video is customization of the user interface, creating custom hotkeys, saving and loading those. We'll touch on the brush panel as well as the texture editor. Before doing anything else, I want to do a little bit of cleanup here, and that is to try to declutter this panel on the right hand side by taking whatever assets I have and placing them elsewhere in the interface. Okay, such as the brushes. And strips, very similar. Materials and masks. And we have assets also in the voxel sculpting room in the form of shaders. Okay. And we'll talk about the tool options panel here shortly. But um, I want to mention that if you click on the merge tool, you'll get a models palette and a splines palette that pops up if you are in the curves tool. In this case, I'm just going to clear all. Okay, and same thing. I'm going to go ahead and dock these very quickly. And so there we have it. Everything's a little bit cleaner. And I'm going to now take my tool options panel and place that in between the layers and the brush options. Okay, now your tool options panel will not always be visible. And what I mean by that is some objects actually have additional options and some do not. Some have no additional, such as the brush. Okay, and so if you want this to stay in one identifiable location within your, within your interface, you can dock it, and each time you come back to 3D Coat, it will remain here. All right. If you do not, again, if you choose another tool, it's gone or if you leave the application it's gone so you may want to be sure to dock that somewhere and just a quick note you can store a single page layout here or the entire workspace and so what I'm going to do now since I've mentioned that is go ahead and bring in a stored workspace And that now contains the texture editor. You find the texture editor in 3D Coat in the textures menu. You can assign a hotkey to it by hitting the end key on your keyboard. That's E N D. And once I do, I can hit the key I want to assign it to. And it's going to tell me, hey buddy, this is already assigned to something. Beat it. Okay, well, you don't have to beat it, but if you if you want to stay here, you know, you're going to have to share, and so that would be stack the key, or you can simply override it and click redefine. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and bring up a stored set of hotkeys. So once you've gone through the application and you've stored hotkeys, so you know, customize it the way you want, you can always save them and reload them. So in this case, I'm just going to load one that I've already stored and I do that through uh, the documents directory 3d coat and in layouts okay, so I'm already here so I'm just going to load that alright and so this texture editor will be floating just like any other panel okay, and you can dock it again by doing so, it will stay in your interface when you come back to 3D Coat once you've left. Okay, so again, any of these you can scale, you can navigate between them if you need, and you can also click, hold, and drag to move within if you have a lot of brush office and to navigate inside your texture editor uh, anywhere that's open not over the island but anywhere it's open you can right click and drag 
Okay, to zoom in and out. Middle mouse click, drag, to pan. Okay, if I try to right click inside of an island, it's just going to increase the brush radius. And that may be what I want. Okay, so the same thing applies to the UV panel here. The same way of navigating. Right click, drag to zoom in and out, middle mouse click to pan. And you can also, again, dock this anywhere you like. You could put the tools between you and the two different workspaces, you know, the 2D workspace and the 3D workspace. Okay, let's return to the paint room. <clears throat> and we're going to resume with the brush options panel. As you can see, the brush alpha is displayed here, reflecting what I have chosen here in the brush uh, palette. Okay, and I can scroll up and down the panel, and most of these are self-explanatory. Brush rotation, if you see here, now it's vertical, but if I adjust that, you see now it's just the opposites. Okay. Okay, it's back to vertical again, and you can do this on the fly by hitting the 9 or the 0 key. And you can see it adjusted here. 9 or 0. Okay, and if you want, let's say for example, if I were to make a row of screws along the arm here, I'm going to turn just depth on. Okay, and this is very similar to strips. I'll show that in just a moment. Okay, and I'm going to turn interpolate on, and this is simply uh, like a lazy mouse or a steady stroke, something of that sort. So if you turn that up quite a bit, it will help steady your stroke quite a bit. All right. So I have a blank layer here chosen. Okay. You notice they're all kind of pointing in the same direction. If I adjusted the angle by clicking rotate along stroke it may give me a better result. You see how it tries to follow the pattern. Okay. And if you happen to have fall off turned way up, you want to be careful if you're trying to do something like this. You can see how uh, fall off is really not what you want. You probably want a sharp edge so you can turn that down. And what we would do is if we wanted more spacing, obviously, make sure you spacing is checked and adjust the amount upward. Okay. One other way that you could do this is use paint with splines. And we should get to that in another video. But that will allow you to basically lay down a uh, spline so that these uh, rivets or screws will be uh, aligned with a little bit more precision. Okay? And I want to do it again. That should about cover the brush options panel. Again, you have sharp shape, number of different uh, options. You may want to go in and just sit down and explore with many of these. Again, you can adjust the radius variation, the rotation, amplitude, depth variation, radius variation, and we'll try this again. Okay, you can see it's much, much different. All right. 
Okay, so moving on now, I want to point out that the Vox Tree panel is not in the Paint Workspace by default, but you may want to place it there if you are doing some vertex you know, voxel painting. Um, that way, if you want to turn off the visibility of your voxel object while you're in the scene, you can do that without having to step all the way into the voxel room. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about strips now. Strips are very similar to what we just did, almost identical in some regard. So let's choose a chain. And I'm going to go back to a brush. Now notice if I keep this brush with the chain, I'm probably going to get some ugliness. So we'll give it a try. Not good. We'll try it again. Okay. Yeah, there, I think that's uh, that needs to get addressed. Okay. So, if I want to clean that up, I need to make sure <clears throat> that I have the appropriate brush alpha. So I'll go with something kind of a hard edge. Okay, now you can see much better. Nice way of creating some ornate decorations on armor, uh, furniture, and things of that sort. And also, you can create your own um, strips by modeling something. Get back up. Go into the voxel room. And what I did, let me see if I have the right part. Yeah, what I did is I placed, um, I, I created with curves, I created basically some seams, brought the layer here, okay, dragged and dropped that layer straight into the panel here, and it stored not only a thumbnail, but also the object for me. So now, I'm going to get out of that by just clicking on another tool. I don't want to bring it in the scene and go back to the paint room and, and show this. I'm going to go ahead and undo a few times to clean this up. Click New. I'm going to go to that location where I had the zipper, or I'm sorry, the uh, seams. Okay, there it is. And I can align it. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to go way up to 512. I want to zoom this to it. As you can see here, it almost goes off the, practically goes off the edge. And I already have some instances here, but I wanted to show how this can be done. So this is great for making cloth seams and things of that sort. Okay, so I want to click that one more time. And I can adjust the depth on this. Make them real tiny. Almost make them touching. In this case, we won't do that. Bring it in just a bit. There we go. Okay. And now just create. And so 3D Coat will create this brush alpha or the strip alpha for me. Okay, again, uh, with interpolate on, I may not need to have rotate long stroke, but I'm going to turn it on just in case. Use a hard edge brush. I 
and you can see how that works. Probably need to scale that up a bit. Yeah. And so if that's too deep, I can always adjust the amount down or up. Okay, so let's move on now to the texture editor real quick. As you can see, I have uh, my breastplate uh, UV map displayed here. I can cycle between the different maps in the upper right hand corner. I can also switch between the different maps uh, or channels which is the normal or depth channel. If you're in micro vertex, instead of a normal map, you'd see a displacement map. Okay. And not only can you view these, but you even have a wireframe overlay if you want, and you can work through it, or as you can see, these are uh, repeating tiles, so you could work here and watch it update here or you can turn wireframe off. This is one of the most uh, powerful aspects of this tool and that is the ability to work simultaneously in a 2D and 3D environment. And what I mean is that if I go down to the head, create a new layer, and turn just color on, and turn strips off, you gotta be careful about that. So I need my brush. I want to choose just a nice fall off here. Turn interpolate off. I don't really need that at this point. But you notice how it updates as soon as I let it off my mouse. Okay. Now, if I were to paint instead in the 2D space notice how it's updating in real time even as I'm brushing. This is very powerful. Okay and I can work with the normals. This is very good, especially for cleaning up a normal map if the baking doesn't come up 100%. Uh, you can go in and clean up quite a bit. You can even smooth by holding the shift key. Smoothing if you want. Um, let's try something like this. And may use dabs. I'm going to uncheck color and check depth. Okay, and you can see that live in the viewport. So I'll undo that and hold the control key. Right click, drag left and right to zoom in and out. Okay, so we're going to stop this video for now. That should help demonstrate overall the capability of the texture editor in conjunction with painting in the 3D viewport and 3D coat. In the next video, what we're going to do is take a look at materials and mask and use that in conjunction with the texture editor as well. So stay tuned and we'll pick up in the next video.